This video hosts different activities relating to the grade 5 unit forces acting on structures and mechanisms. And as the title suggests, we're going to be exploring and describing different forces that act on and within different structures. And we'll be looking at different external forces, comparing and measuring the impact of these forces on different structures. In order to do that, we'll be building, uh, designing first and foremost, different structures and we're going to be looking at the materials we've used, our different designs, the advantages of these. Uh, hopefully these activities will give you some ideas for the planning of this unit. One of the main ideas you'll be looking at with your students is compression and tension, which are internal forces acting within a structure. Now a quick example of tension is an elastic because it's that stretching force that's pulling apart. Maybe a cable supporting something within a structure would be an example of that. Now a sponge is a good example of compression because you're pushing and squeezing. That's that type of force. And So maybe a pillar or a wall that's supporting a lot of weight would be under sort of a compressive force. Now something that's easy to do with your sponge, if you have a marker, you can draw some straight lines on your sponge, have your students do that, and when they make a U-shape with their sponge, they'll easily see uh, examples of tension and compression on the sides of your sponge. So you want to ask them which one is which. The bottom here undergoes uh, stretching because you can see the lines are moving further apart. And on the top you see compression because they're being squished together. So you can look for examples of tension and compression in structures around your classroom and in the larger environment. These will host some good discussions with your students. They can point out different examples. And you want to point out different features within structures uh, that make them stronger or weaker. And that will be quite useful to them when they're designing their structures a little later on. Finding examples of internal forces around your classroom is really easy because they're everywhere. And a chair is a really good example of it as well. Now my dog has very kindly volunteered to act as mass for us today and she does that very well. So looking at the forces acting on this chair, we see the center part of the chair is under tension as a result of the mass on it. And that force is pushing down in the center of the chair which is stretching it out. And the force goes to the four corners here of the chair and pushes down on its legs, just like the column supporting it. And that's compressing it, squeezing it down. So that's an example in your classroom. Hopefully you've had a chance to explore different structures in your surrounding environment by going for a neighborhood walk or looking at a slideshow. And after a discussion with your students about uh, internal forces in the structures they see uh, and uh, different features within those structures for strength and stability, you might want to revisit a few of them. One of which is the arch, which has been around for a long time and is a really stable and strong shape. So you can see that if I place a piece of wood here on top of our arch, it might tip over a little bit, but it's pretty strong. And that's compared to if you were just to lay a sheet of paper flat, would go right down, it's not as strong. Now an arch is a, is a curved structure that converts that downward force of its own weight and the weight above it uh, into its sides and its base. So that's sort of a downward and outwards force here. Quick activity that gets students out of their seats and experiencing the forces of an arch that you maybe use in gym uh, is to have your students pair up and join their palms together and face one another, lean into one another. And they're going to be uh, creating an arch themselves with their partner. You ask them, where do they feel push and pull forces? And they're going to feel a strong push force in their hands. You might have a third student come in to test the strength of their structure by gently pulling down on their hands the peak of their arch and ask them how difficult it is to break that structure. And it's not going to be that difficult. And so if you have two other students, you ask them, how could they strengthen this particular structure? Well, they could create buttresses on either end to stabilize that arch that they've created. So that's having a buttress on either end, like these books here, or bookends on a bookshelf. And that balances that downward and outward force on the outside of an arch by pushing inward. So if you have students sit up against the legs of their partners that are 
uh, creating the arch, they're going to create a very strong structure to be able to lean even further. And you can also create a dome structure under the same principle. If you have a playground ball or a basketball, you get five students to put their hands up against the ball all the way around and gently lean out. Under the same question, you ask them where do they feel that push or pull and how could they make it stronger if they had five other helpers uh, around. How many pennies can a bridge uh, made out of a single sheet of paper hold up? Now this is a question for your students. They're going to make some predictions, some guesses, and you're going to place your sheet of paper on a 20 centimeter span approximately between a few books and they're going to count, your students are going to count the pennies as you place them on. If you're going to be pretty lucky if you can get one or two pennies before that bridge collapses. Now the main idea of this particular activity is to ask your students how they can alter a sheet of paper to make it stronger, to make it hold up several more pennies than what we saw here. You're going to give them some scissors, some pennies, now I'm using these to simulate pennies because I don't have any right now, uh, or some paper clips also as well. They can use these in the construction, their design of their bridge. Now, your students, maybe in small groups, are going to brainstorm some of these ideas. You can ask them to think about designs they've seen or features they've seen in existing bridges and how they might integrate that into their design uh, within this project. Some of your students are going to fold their paper a few times to see how many pennies that supports. Uh, yet others may fold it differently here and use their paper clips to hold the folds together. Because you're going to want to ask your students how are they going to use these paper clips? Do they want to use the scissors and cut in any way? Some may come up with some pretty creative ways. And by doing this particular design, it might hold up a number of pennies uh, quite a bit differently than if they would have folded it fewer times. Others may fold it differently in an accordion style and place their pennies in some of the folds. They'll notice that it will hold a number of pennies in that way. And yet others may choose to design it differently by rolling the tube and using their paper clips to hold that together. Maybe they'll put their pennies in the center of the roll and maybe that will affect the integrity of their bridge as well. The main idea that we're looking here for is that by changing the shape of material, we can change the way it resists forces. And paper can be quite weak and flexible. And if we fold it, we twist it, we roll it, it can make it considerably stronger. Your students might also learn that uh, a bridge can support more weight if it's distributed across its length rather than just in one section.